So you've made music and you are ready to share it with the world. You're ready to pitch it to music libraries. This is a question I get a whole lot. Um, you want to add it to a portfolio for your personal or your production business music website. You want to just show it to your friends and family. So where do you put your music? How do you put your music up? And really, why do you put your music up? And that's what all I want to talk about in today's video is SoundCloud good for this? Well, I've heard mixed things. What about disco? Does it involve dancing? Uh, what about real crafter? Although I'm really not much of a fisherman. Where do you go to show off your music when it's time to get serious showing off your music, especially to libraries, especially to clients or anyone? Every week I feel like I am telling you that this is a biggie. This is an important thing. But I really think this is a biggie. Well, hello and welcome to episode 74 of the Make Music Income podcast. Uh, we talk about making music income. What a surprise. Um, these are practical ideas. These are things that we hope will help you with your music that could help you make music income. It's not all just about like how much am I making right now or if I do this, will I make money? But for the most part, what I'm trying to do is just give you some practical thoughts on how to make music income. And that could be with sync licensing for television and films and ads. It could be stock music licensing for YouTubers and for corporate presentations and people. Uh, by the way, stock music is used for way more than just YouTube or used more for, than just for presentations. There's lots of people downloading stock music for many things. Um, artist income. Uh, music for your uh, your artist gigs and for your sales. Income from Spotify and DSPs and Apple Music, all those places. Online channels like like starting your own music channel or starting your own YouTube channel or your, your own TikTok or Instagram channels. Music publishing and royalty incomes and of course music production, which we talked about last week. And if you haven't seen last week's show, you're going to want to go back and watch that one because it was pretty important. I'm actually editing down that uh, that information to a, a really easy to watch uh, part uh, and way for you to see it. But first, uh, you know what? Let me introduce myself. My name is Eric Copeland and I make music income because that's all I do. That's all I have. I don't have another job that's like a job job that doesn't include music in it. So I teach, I work as a songwriter and a composer. I I'm a YouTuber, obviously, and talk about and teach here on YouTube. I've been a church music director before. I have been a music marketer before. I've been lots of things, a producer mainly. And so all of these things have helped me make music income for many years. And so I'm thankful for all these incomes. But one of the things I found out when I started watching YouTubers and, and seeing everything that was going on with uh, people on YouTube is I noticed that it just seemed to me that there were some things missing. There were some things that some people weren't talking about. And uh, especially people who, you know, there's a lot of YouTubers and not every YouTuber was in the music business at some point, but um, I certainly wasn't. I have hung around the music business. I've tried to get in the music business, but Eventually, I started my own company and have been now supporting my family with music income for 30 years, 25 years, something like that. It's an adventure. Uh, this is June the 30th. Tomorrow is the first. It's rent time. Uh, it can be kind of crazy depending on the month. It's a month to month thing. This is not a job. I do have a job where I get paid on the 1st and 15th, but even that can be an adventure. But that's another story. Um, so I've supported my family for 30 years doing this. Now, most of you are like me. You have not had a job in the music business for whatever reason, but you 
that doesn't mean you can't make any money making music. And so, um, as always, I do want to thank my co-host here. A lot of folks in the chat here and are here. Uh, Luca is in the house. How are you, man? Good to see you. Arco is in the house joining me today. Uh, is Eric fighting with YouTube again? I don't think I'm fighting with YouTube. It doesn't sound like I'm fighting with YouTube. Um, always, uh, all waves, music visuals. Cool, cool name. Uh, Bradford Knight's in the house. Daniel is in the house today. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. Um, you are my co-host, so feel free to comment as I go along. Save questions that are not related to what I'm talking about for a little later. Um, but if you have a thought about what I'm talking about at the moment, I'll try to keep an eye on the comments. And uh, today, we're going to be talking about where, where, why, and how to show off your music. And why is this important? It's pretty darn important because if you don't have a place and a way to show people the things you're making, and I'm not talking about just like uh, pitching one song and sending an MP3 to somebody, but I'm sh talking about showing off your entire portfolio. It's huge stuff, pretty huge, huge stuff. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And um, <laughs> Arco says, actually, YouTube was fighting with me. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Sorry to hear that about your troubles. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about on today's show. Along the way, I'll be answering your questions. And uh, join us every Friday. I try to do this about 11 a.m. every Friday. I think I'm getting better at this live podcast thing. And I will tell you that I have experimented this whole month of June with a podcast every week and then using some of the podcast pieces for shorts. And then the, this is also the podcast that pretty much goes out on, on the podcast channels. So if you are listening, thank you for being part of the, uh, the listening part, the, the podcast, the real podcast. And if you're watching, thanks for being here and watching me ramble for about an hour every week. But hey, it's this important rambling. Do not tune out of here because we're going to talk about some important things today. I'm going to tell you about my week here in a minute. We're also going to talk about some news items you're going to want to know about if you like sounds. So hang in for that kind of stuff. i got a lot of stuff here today. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to talk about how to show off your music and, and the sites and the uh, processes and why, we, why do you want to do this. And that's why we want to dig into that today. Um, Oh, Ronan has come in. Good rambling morning to you. Rambling, rambling, rambling. Uh, I'm a rambling man. Okay, so uh, today's podcast is sponsored in part by Make Music Income Daily. That's right. I'm sponsoring my own podcast. But I am also, uh, and I'm going to talk about Make Music Income Daily here in a minute. But, uh, you know, I'll, there's several people. And if you are... Part, let's see if there's any make me um, anybody who is part of that in here. I don't see anybody in here. Uh, oh, don't forget. I won't. I'll, don't forget the news stinger. Bradford says. Oh, don't forget. Don't worry. I've got you covered, Bradford. Um, Daydream Studios in the house. Matthias, how are you, sir? Um, happy Friday to everybody. Thanks everybody for being here and co-hosting with me. I am going to have some co-hosts. Back to co-hosts uh, here and, and for the next couple of weeks, I think. So some uh, some interesting ideas and co-hosts over the next few weeks, I believe. Uh, if they don't, then you'll get me. Uh, and if they do, you'll still get me. So what a deal. Uh, but the Make Music Income Daily thing is something where I try to shoot a, a little video every morning and tell you what's up behind the scenes. And I have been doing this for a couple of weeks. Uh, a few of you are part of it. I don't know. I don't see any of the uh, the people who who are part of that in here today. But I will tell you that Make Music Income Daily is in uh, jeopardy of being canceled due to lack of interest. I do have three or four people in there, uh, and YouTube does not make it easy. You have to really go through a very long. Th thing you have to type into a browser on your phone to even be able to join the thing. The easier way would be to go to makemusicincome.com slash daily. 
there's a link there that will take you to the link to sign up if you're interested. Lots of things that I do there. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, do I talk about that more in a moment? Um, no, I really don't talk about that in a moment. I've got too many other things to talk about, but I do offer daily behind the scenes things that I talk about on there. Plus, there's ways that you can uh, get in larger levels to get uh, very cheap song critiques and also get very cheap one-on-ones with me through um, Zoom. So if you're interested in that, let me know and go to makemusicincome.com slash daily. All right, so let's move on to my week. And I've had a pretty good week this week trying to repair from uh, last week and having to travel to Kentucky for a funeral and getting back in town last weekend and getting back kind of uh, in, um, in, the, in, the, in the groove. It took me two days to catch up with clients and, and I was late to work all the time. And so, so much to do. But uh, I had a very interesting Tuesday. Um, something happened that I'm not ready to talk about. It's a super secret large income possibility. What could this be? One million dollars per chance? Probably not. But uh, it is very interesting and super exciting. I, I am super excited about the possibility. However, uh, I, I just can't talk about it. I can't talk about it yet. But uh, we'll, we'll see. And it, once I know, my friends, you will also know. All right. Um, I finished a song demo yesterday for an artist and got paid. Yay. That's done. Um, I got a piano song going for another client. He sends me, uh, this is a client who records on his Roland digital piano into GarageBand. And then he sends me the GarageBand file, which I import into Logic. And then I copy the piano out of there and I paste it back into another Logic file. And then I put a beautiful Keyscape piano on it and I re-spit it back out as a beautiful piano. And then we make videos and put it up there. So that's uh, that that client's particular thing. And so working on that, also working behind the scenes on an EDM song for another client and a whole album with all sorts of different people involved and waiting for scratch vocals from a client on an album. Uh, just lots of things. Client work never ends. And so, uh, thank goodness, right? Um, continued beer work. I call it beer work on uh, the classical piece I'm working on. Uh, it's all into MuseScore now, which is a scoring program for, that you can write out the notes for, for various players that might play. But uh, the reason it's called beer work is because putting in articulations and putting in uh, all the dynamics and all the ties and slurs and everything that you have to put in for players to play it correctly, because this isn't MIDI. They don't know what patch they're playing. They have to be told what notes to play, when and how to play them. And uh, they, they need instructions on even how, how to come in uh, as far as their their dynamics, how loud they should come in. Should they come in quiet, pianissimo, or piano? Or should they come in forte, or fortissimo? Should they come in really loud? Uh-oh, it looks like my phone has gone offline there for a second. Well, don't worry, I'm still here. I just don't know why my phone has gone off. I put it on airplane mode, but apparently uh, it didn't take. So somebody was trying to text me or call me or something. So uh, let's see. So I'm continuing beer work on that. Um, I was featured this week on the Sheet Music, uh, Selling Sheet Music podcast with Garrett Breeze. Um, he asked me to provide a little story about that. So I did. I provided a story about a sheet music sale that I had and how it came about. And you can hear that on the Selling Sheet Music podcast. I'll try to remember to put that down below. Garrett's been on my channel before, and he will be again here soon. Um, I had a new song accepted into Motion Array, and uh, there's a whole story about that because it was a orchestral Star Spangled Banner I forgot that I had around. And uh, so I put it up there uh, thinking, hey, 4th of July is coming up here. And I put it up a while ago, and they finally got to it, and they said, hey, you know, we're asking for these traditional versions of this song in 
uh, in a request thing. And, and so maybe you should submit it to that. And I did. And they turned that around in two days. And boom, that's out there in part of the request. Uh, I did notice my friend um, Daydream Studio uh, also uh, has, a, uh, has a couple of those. I'm, Daydream Studio, you must be killing it this week um, on, uh, on, on Motion Array because, dude, you have, gosh, two of the top 10, uh, I don't know if it's the staff picks on the front page, because you, you have Washington Post March, you have uh, Star Spangled Banner, you must really be killing it uh, and, and doing similar things to me. That's funny. Um, but yeah, uh, so I put it in there and now it's in Motion Array. And I'm having a good Motion Array month. It'll be better than last month, which was the best month uh, of, of, the, of the year, uh, which is still not mean hundreds of dollars. It might mean hundred of dollars. So we'll see. But uh, a new song on Motion Array. And then I have a ton more to go in there. Uh, I have a bunch of classical pieces that... Um, I kind of pulled out of an exclusive library before they went live and uh, and now going to be putting all of those up, these piano sonatas, to uh, all the library, to my non-exclusive um, places. But I did not get that done this week. Um, let's see what else. Like I said, I have guest hosts coming for the pod and uh, did not get songs written uh, that I need to get written for uh, for my exclusive libraries who want things. Uh, let's see what your week was like. Um, Mat Matias says, my week was mixed mood, super stressed in my main job, but all of my 10 songs on Motion Array got accepted on Motion Array in one day, and two of the Patrick songs got staff picked. Yes, I saw that, my friend. Congratulations. Um, that is money, folks, if you are on the front page. Because think about it. When people go to Motion Array, uh, somebody goes and they want to... Um, they want to put music up to a, uh, a, a, a they're, they need music for their YouTube thing they're doing. And, and they're doing some kind of 4th of July video. It could be an advertisement, could be something like that. And they need the Star Spangled Banner. They're going to go to these libraries. Well, if on the very front page, there is a Star Spangled Banner. Guess what? That's likely going to be chosen. He, and especially if it's good quality. Um, and I, I would say there are... I think I looked in there like 10 versions of the Star Spangled Banner on Motion Array. And uh, there are varying quality and varying styles. But um, I think that, you know, you're going to get it chosen. It's going to get downloaded very easily. People go there to find music fast. They don't go down to really, I mean, they might start do a search for the Star Spangled Banner. But if you're already on that front page, my friend, way to go. Good job. Fabio's in the house. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, Arco says, I'm trying to grow my Spotify and YouTube. Yeah, we're going to talk about those two things today. Uh, Lucas said, my week was very good. I sold 10 tracks on Music Revolution only two months after signing up, and I was really surprised by the result. I would love to know, I've been hearing about people talking about Music Revolution. Um, what, uh, what price did you sell those at? We would like, everyone would like to know, Luca. Uh, let us know. Um, yes, same story. Uh, Bradford says, love the success stories. Very inspiring. Hey, that's what we're all about here is music success. Uh, love three said, uh, Lucas says, I have had three songs accepted, accepted in Spotify playlists. Wow. Way to go. And soon of the, one of them will be on Ger German radio. Luca killing it over there. Great job. Um, Arco feeling inspired. Bradford Knight says, I won the Arizona NSAI chapter challenge with my song submission. That's awesome, man. Congrats. People are having some stuff happen. Bradford says, Eric, what is the next major holiday I can write songs for? Probably Halloween uh, is next. I mean, we after actually keep always keep doing patriotic. And if you can find patriotic songs people haven't done or new versions of them. I did notice on Motion Array there's only one vocal version of Star Spangled Banner, which made me want to do one. But... Um, uh, keep doing patriotic because actually the next holiday after July 4th is Memorial Day uh, in the States, which is another big, um, uh, another big patriotic day that people download. I, I sell, th that's why patriotic music is my jam. Uh, I got to do more of it because Veterans Day, um, 
Actually, we've already had Memorial Day. That will be Veterans Day in September, I think. Or, or is it Memorial Day? I can't remember. I get it mixed up. But all three of those, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, 4th of July, even Flag Day, um, there are lots of days where people are looking for patriotic music. And guess what? They're looking for it all the time. So if you do patriotic music, then you need to be putting it up on these libraries. Um, so yeah, get some songs started. And then after that, it would be Halloween and Christmas. And it's never too early to put Christmas music up. I'm working on a Christmas album now for, um, for my library. And I got to get that done by the end of July or mid-July. I got to hustle. Uh, so I got to get to that. It's going to be fun, but I got to got to get it done because my Christmas music probably does the best for me ex on the exclusive libraries. Um, that's probably the thing that that gives me the most BMI money uh, in the back end. And Bradford says 1111 is Vets Day. So yeah, Veterans Day is the third one of the year, but um, and that will come before Thanksgiving. I would I would also say if you can write any songs about Thanksgiving. And I mean turkey songs or uh, any funny songs that might go around things or songs about being thankful, um, thank you songs. People look for those around Thanksgiving when they're doing Thanksgiving videos. And there's not a lot of people making Thanksgiving music. And so I might suggest that you do that. Um, Lucas says, the last in the last news, the, in the next weeks, I'll be doing uh, a big upgrade to my studio with new hardware and a new Mac. Excellent. Just did that. And it's awesome. I have to tell you, it is wonderful to have Stevie's Mac uh, Mini here. And uh, Steve and I have been chatting every once in a while online about things. And uh, hopefully he'll be back here soon as a guest host as well and be back where he belongs. So, all right. Well, it is that time, folks. We have gone through my week. Um, and it's time um, that we get to the news. That's right. It's time for the news on Friday, June 30th, 2023, here on the Make Music Income podcast. All right. So the very first, oh, it's still time. Apparently. Sorry. It was on a loop and still time for news on the make music income. See, I have to, I think we have to do like a, 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 a news. Probably what I'm going to do is like a voiceover for it or something like that. And Bradford says, yes, the news stinger. Okay. Hope you enjoyed that. That was, that was for you. All right, so first thing in the news today, this is something I've already been mentioning, and I'm just going to show you. The Native Instruments sale is ending. The Summer of Sound is nearly over. So all of you who are updating or want to update your sounds and you love Native Instruments stuff, you need to be going over to nativeinstruments.com. 50% off on many things. I had a student last night who was telling me he was so excited that it was 50% off. So yeah, uh, you need to get over there. I, I took advantage of this early. I got that play box thing right there and uh, I now have uh, complete 14 standard and that means I got ozone standard, which is coming in very handy. I got play box, got all these things. Lots of things I haven't even had time to use because of uh, different things going on. But definitely check out this sale because uh, it, is, it is something that you wanna be be part of and i would highly suggest you get over to native instruments before it's over i think you've got well july 6th so about a week or so so get over there and get this stuff because it's gonna then they're gonna go back to the regular prices and so much good stuff happening at native instruments this is not a sponsored podcast by the way <laughs> all right so that is the first thing in the news um remember that i offer free things do you know i have free stuff and um, part of putting your music up into the places that you put them that we're going to talk about today is this is on the two everything checklist. The uh, part of my checklist is, did I put this on uh, disco or did I put this on SoundCloud or did I put this on a thing where people can see it when they go see my music? Am I updating every time I come up with a new song? Am I updating 
to my 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 websites which I'm going to show you how I use these things to show off my music and am I updating my portfolios I'm not uh, is the answer and I need to but this do everything checklist has that on there and uh, you can get that at make music income free along with other things with the the new ebook tools to make music and make music income as well as 50 ways to make me uh, make music income ebook uh, I'm getting ready to do some shorts on the 50 ways. So that should be quite entertaining. Um, and Pond5 upload course is there. And my re free research paper that I wrote is also up there at makemusicincome.com slash free. Go get free stuff. It's there if you want free stuff. All right. News number two. This is something that I found earlier last night actually you may have seen it but there is a new um, BBC uh, SO orchestra piano Steinway that just came out yesterday from Spitfire it is beautiful I'm going to show that to you as well um, I need to add it to the stream but I've got to change the tab um, how do I do that let me just remove this and I'm going to stop this and show you because uh, there are some things you need to know about this and it is very interesting but also you kind of need to know some things so first of all the BBC Symphony Orchestra piano is new and it is out and it sounds lovely I don't know if anybody else watched the video but boy does it sound sound beautiful um, it, uh, it, it is a Steinway. It was recorded. Let's see if I can navigate on this page here, um, if they have anything about it. Um, it was recorded at the BBC Studios. It's, um, it's got a lot of stuff there. Paul does a really nice uh, demo on it. And uh, there it is, right there. Um, a beautifully recorded Steinway piano. Now, personally, I am not a Steinway piano guy. I don't know about you all, but uh, I prefer a Yamaha. But for solo piano things, for orchestral piano things, this likely sounds like a piano that you're going to want. And I, uh, you can see it's full price right now. It's 189 You can also get a the, what do they call it, the core version for $99. And you can also get the uh, discover version now I want to talk about that next and that is another tab that I need to share with you and um, it, you need to know this because I said all right I have BBC SO uh, discover and so I said maybe I can get that piano too but my friends what I found is that I couldn't because I looked at how to update the BBC Symphony Orchestra 1.21 so you can get the um, piano and as you can see here it says uh let's see did it share you, as you can see here it says uh an update is now available for core and pro users so if you are a, a bbso bbcso core or pro user you can get this as an update please note that the rollout they didn't spell roll correctly uh pre please note that the rollout to discover user will take a longer period of time not very good english there uh, English people you should expect the update within the next two weeks so um, it might be two weeks until those of us who are uh, discover users the free version uh, get this piano but it sure does look nice and it sure does sound nice so be on the look for that the new um, Spitfire BBC SO piano uh, it's going to be coming out uh, very soon and uh, I, I have no idea like the what, how it's going to um, be for us as commoners who have the free version uh, versus how big. It seems like it's microphone positions, which is the least exciting thing to me uh, on, on things is when they start talking, now we have decatrees and we have all these things. I usually am not that concerned on all the, uh, the microphone positions, so I'm not worried about that. Um, all right, uh, the next thing I want to talk about before we get into our topic is 
Um, I am still thinking about this 10 week, 10 song mastermind. If you haven't heard about it, my goal on this will be to try and produce 10 full songs to make an album to release to streaming, to shop to libraries, and um, maybe sell on sheet music, do all the things. Whatever kind of music it is, we're going to try to do a 10 week mastermind where we focus every week on what new production or new song have you written not maybe finished and and all the songs don't have to be finished in 10 weeks but you should have at least 10 songs even if they're mock-ups or even if they're uh, first drafts or whatever um, i'd like to do this mastermind live on the hello composers channel we'll see if you're interested in that i have people signing up i have two signs up already i am taking uh i'm not really ready to announce when to do this but basically week one we'll introduce all the composers and then we'll um we'll start talking to each composer about what they want to do with this mastermind and then in week five and six we'll see where we are do you have five or six five or six songs or are you only at a two or three songs and maybe this might end up being uh, a three a, a, a five to six song EP or something like that. That's fine too. It doesn't really matter. But the challenge would be to try to do 10 songs and I would be part of that as well. I'll be doing writing as well. Um, you'll also get a free one-on-one -on -one Zoom. Don't have a price yet. Uh, n I don't know how many people are gonna be involved yet. So signups begin now and you can just go get on the wait list and just email me, either email makemusicincome at gmail.com or Hello Composers and uh, talk to me there and uh, yeah we'll talk about it and get you uh, on the wait list you won't have to pay anything to be on the wait list just let me know you're interested if you have interest at all even if you don't even know if you can afford it go ahead and email me about it and please let me know would love to have you uh, part of it okay hey if you're watching this and you are new here and i don't know if there's many new people or any new people but make sure you join or subscribe or like this thing or whatever i have no idea how it helps this channel i have no idea how youtube works <laughs> i really don't i just make videos and talk about what's going on with me it's it's not a, I, I look at all the scientific youtube videos and and they're all like do this and tell people this and i just i just do make short videos and then i do an hour-long video it's i haven't even got to the topic it's 33 minutes <laughs> ridiculous okay um I'll also remember to be part of the podcast give me something here say something and if especially if you are from facebook or instagram uh, i mean sorry uh, or uh, uh linkedin and you're watching i don't see any comments from a um from a Facebook person or an, a LinkedIn. And frankly, I have no idea if anybody watches there. But if you are, I'd love to see a comment from you. Say, hey, I'm watching on Facebook or I'm watching on LinkedIn. That would be cool because I've started kind of multi-streaming this thing. So guess what? It's time to get in to today's topic. Finally, right? How, where, and why to show off your music and let's start with the first one of these things you might be saying okay you're 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 going through all this stuff and you're, you've titled this thing uh why and where and how to show off your music and why are you doing this why why is this even a thing why is this a topic why do i need to show off my music well there's a lot of reasons and, and mainly it's because you want to make music income. And guess what? No one is going to pay for your music or buy your music or be interested in you as a composer or as an artist if they can't hear any music. If they can't hear what you're doing, they're not gonna hire you as a producer. If they can't hear what you're doing when they are looking at you as a possible artist for their library, they're not gonna bring you into the library. I see people all the time emailing, they say, I have a song. I want to get in libraries. I'm like, that ain't going to do it. We've talked about that a few weeks ago. But what we don't talk a lot about is how you get people watching, how you get people uh, there, how you get people to you know be part of your music. And the way you do that is by putting your music up where people can hear it. You've got to be able to, people have to be able to hear 
your music and you have to be able to show off what you can do. And some of you might be saying, hey, I'm not a show off. I'm not in this for attention. It's not about attention. This is about business. We're trying to make income here. And in order to make income, we've got to be able to show off our music. So let's talk about the whys. Why do you want to do this? Well, most of you probably in here and me included, we want to get in libraries. We want to get in exclusive libraries. We want to get in motion array. A lot of you watching or uh, will be watching or want to or listening. You want to know how to get in some of these libraries like Artlist and Motion Array and Pond5 and all these kind of things. Well, it helps a lot if they can go to a website where they can see that you are already making music. Um, this is this is a very helpful thing because it, they need to know if you're going to be able to create continuous music for them and continue to bring them music because if you can't, then they're not going to let you in the library. I know people who say, I, I, I sent my five songs to Motion Array and they rejected me. And I'm like, do you have a portfolio up of your music anywhere? No, I only have the five songs. Well, that's probably, if you look at it from Motion Array's standpoint, that's probably not that interesting to them. That they've got a, somebody who is just sending them five songs and they're all over the place and there's no links to another to a site anywhere where they can hear more. Not that they need to hear more, but they do want to do some kind of check, some kind of background check. Is this person able to create music that we want to hear? Um, the second one is what we talked about last week, which is getting client work. If you remember, one of the big things that we talked about in last week's podcast was how to set up a website. And then the very first thing is putting up a portfolio of your music something that people can see and hear and decide if you are what they want as a music maker. Are they interested in you making music for them? And they won't know until they hear the music you're doing. So that's another big why that we need to be doing this, so especially if you want client work, you want to get in libraries, uh, you want to be an artist and you want people to, to know you're an artist. I think personally, I think Spotify and being on DSPs is more of a legitimacy factor for, um, for, for, for artists. But legitimacy is what we're talking about here, folks. This is why that you want to make sure that you're putting your music up and you're showing your music off. Uh, we'll get to the, with the tools next and the how and where and all that here in a second. But this legitimacy thing is real. Legitimacy, um, it, it, we talked about it last week with the website for producers, but this goes for anybody doing anything, a composer wanting to get in libraries, uh, a composer wanting to, a producer wanting to find clients, an artist wanting to find fans. I don't care what it is. If you're making music, you better have a way to show that you're a legit person doing it. And I think a lot of people are, are kind of just, just meandering around, making some tunes, leaving them on your hard drive, maybe putting them on something, maybe not. Uh, a lot of people in here, as we saw earlier, what we've been doing this week, busy. Not only, uh, Matthias is not only busy in his job, but he is also getting 30, you know, getting tons of songs up on Motion Array. That's a guy who's hustling. And he can show his legitimacy by being one of the staff picks on there. He also has a great website. And people who have a great website and show off their music are people who are going to succeed in this business and generally as composers and artists. People who don't, won't. And so uh, it's this has nothing to do as far as showing off your music with being on TikTok or Instagram or anything like this. This has to do with giving people a place where they can go to and listen to your music. So let's move quickly on to number two, which is the tools, how to show off your music. Uh, we've talked about the why, now let's kind of go to, to how, because um, you've, you, once you decide you want to put your music up, there, there aren't tools on every website designer or, or builder to put music clips up. So sometimes you have to have certain sites that you put your, your clips up to. I have a client that I, I was doing some work for yesterday, and we've built them a lovely site. And what they use on their site is SoundCloud players. And these SoundCloud players 
are um, the client themselves are able to go and upload their new songs onto SoundCloud, and then the player gives it, it gives us an embed code to take that that player and put it right inside their site. And this is like magic because I don't have to update it for them at that point. All they have to do is add songs to their SoundCloud and it automatically comes up on their player. I'm going to, when we get towards the end here, I'm going to show you my sites and how I use these, these types of players and how that happens um, because it, it is quite helpful. And SoundCloud is something I've been using probably since the beginning. There were other sites that I used um, back in the day. And, uh, so, but when SoundCloud came along, they had such a great player and they had such great code to embed the stuff on your site. Um, let me know as we're, as I'm chatting along here about these things, what you use, um, either here in the chat, or you can let me know in the comments of the video, but I would love to know what you use to show off your stuff. But the first one I want to talk about is SoundCloud. Now SoundCloud does a lot of things and I have a link down below of a podcast I listened to last night by, um, Ari Herstand, who is, who does the Ari's take um, podcast and he talked to SoundCloud. He talked to all of them and uh, he talked to them and uh, they they talked about lots of things that didn't include what we're talking about here. More artist things, how to find fans and things like that. That side of SoundCloud I, I'm not familiar with, I'm not using and I, since I'm getting less and less into the artist side of things, I am not uh, using SoundCloud, but the link below to that interview with them, if you're an artist and you want to find out how to get fans, they're doing some interesting things with SoundCloud. But SoundCloud still is a great place just to put your songs up, not necessarily to use it as a Spotify type thing for streaming. You can do that kind of there, but I don't know much about that. I use SoundCloud for their feature um, for being a player of my songs that I can then get that embed code, code and pop it into a website and then boom, I've got a player there. And I'll show you that in a little while. But SoundCloud is the first one of these and uh, the first one that I would recommend. Um, uh, Fabio, I'll get to your question in just a little while. Um, so SoundCloud is first. The next one is Disco. And Disco, it has nothing to do with dancing with a uh, three-piece suit on and an open collar. Uh, with your hand up like this. Uh, that's disco music, but this uh, is basically short for discography. So uh, it's a site from Australia that came up several years ago, and this has become the favorite for most, um, most music supervisors, most people in the exclusive library game. They really love the fact that, um, that they can use this site. It has some really interesting things that um, that I find very helpful, and, and I have, do most of my pitching now with this. And um, Arco, you just gave me a great idea. Thank you very much. I've added that in here, and I will talk about that next. I had left that off. Um, so Disco is one. Um, I'll show you Disco as well here in a second and how it, how it embeds. Um, there is a cost for Disco. Um, there's a cost for SoundCloud. There's a cost cost for all of almost all of these, but um, SoundCloud is you can have a free version, and I have a free version for most of the stuff that I show off on there. Disco, there is no free version as far as I know. It's like fifteen dollars a month. But if you are serious about exclusive libraries and you're wanting to play in that game with film and television and production music, um, Disco is 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 the place people like to go. But there is another one, and I'll show you more about Disco in a minute, but there is another one called Real Crafter, and uh, I don't know much about this one. I have another video for you that I've put in the description below where our friend Dave Croft did a great interview with them a few months ago. And so if you want to know about Real Crafter, uh, I actually was trying to get Dave to come on today, but he was too busy, and I was going to have him talk about Real Crafter. But uh, you can just go watch that whole video after this one. After this one, um, it's the link is down in the description, and he talks to the people of Real Crafter about that particular piece of software. I do have a picture of it here, and I can share. 
not that. Um, and I can show you Real Crafter um, right here. And uh, yeah, showcase your music like a pro. It has uh, players and lots of ways to customize the players that you have. Um, it, it looks like a really cool tool. Uh, I would imagine there's some pricing here. The pricing is up here and uh, there's a free version, three reels, 20 audio tracks. That's a little limiting. And then starter plan is $10 a month for unlimited audio. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I pay $15 uh, for, it's fairly unlimited at Disco. I think there might be a, a top out. But this might be something you want to look at at Real Crafter. Again, if you're interested in this, there is a great video with Dave Croft from 52Qs in the description below. So that's Real Crafter, and that's another one that you can use. Another one that is pretty good. Uh, and and uh, I for, totally forgot about this, but they also have really great um, embeds in there. And this is... Uh, reminded from Arco said, I think M Bandcamp uh, also allows embed card. And it does, and it's free. Um, you can also sell physical product there. Um, so uh, let me see. Let me go through the rest of my list, then I'm going to answer some comments here. Um, YouTube is also another thing that I use to show off my music. And I'll show you my site here in a minute. I use all sorts of these things and a lot of these including youtube including bandcamp likely real crafter disco soundcloud they all offer these little embed music players that you can put into your site and code that you just can plop in and it works pretty cool and uh it, it allows people to listen without having to go over to another site without having to go over to soundcloud and all that business so yeah, definitely take um, a look at these. Now, the one I do want to talk about as one I would probably not suggest, that seems like something you should do. Spotify also offers ways to embed music in your site. The problem here is not everybody everybody uh, subscribes to Spotify. And I'm not sure that if you're not, if you don't have any kind of subscription, you can listen to Spotify things on someone's site. I, I, I may be wrong. If anybody knows about that and uses Spotify in that way, let me know. But uh, I don't see uh, that that is the best way. However, if you can make it work and you think it's worth it, then yeah, you could be making money uh, from Spotify, download, uh, Spotify streams as people listen to your music. I think I've tried to do this on a site or two, but eventually I run into some kind of code problems with it. But so that's a little bit of cautionary on Spotify as a music player. Um, let me get to some um, some comments here. Um, Matias said, "I have no luck or felt impact with showing my stuff. My website has nearly no clicks, despite the fact that I've invested a lot of time in SEO things. Also, no luck with SoundCloud." Um, he also said, "I." I tend to spread my motion array profile. Did a couple of times with YouTube authors who use my stuff. They put their link in the description for my uh, motion array profile. Uh, that is interesting uh, to think about is if motion array and pawn five, both which, I, uh, or at least pawn five would be great if they offered some kind of embed feature because they could go ahead and download it there if they wanted it. Um, but getting back to your um, your feeling like you're not seeing anything in any impact. Let me just say that this is not, what I'm talking about here with showing off your music is not so you'll get tons of SEO traffic, tons of people just, I mean, why would you get traffic when you think about it? I mean, what... What impetus would there be for someone to go in and say, is there a composer in Germany I might find that has good music? This is for um, what I call resume or portfolio for your business. And it's not about getting hundreds or thousands of looks on there. It's about getting that one important look. That one time that you apply to that library or to a client and that one person goes to that website and hears those songs. That's one click, that's one visit. That may not look very good on your stats. You may look at your stats and go, oh, 
only a, only five clicks. Well, what if one of those clicks was a library that ended up hiring you or a client that ended up hiring you? So to me, again, when we go back to the legitimate legitimacy factor here, that's what I'm talking about for this. This is for serious people. And you are, uh, Matthias, you are a serious composer. You have to have this on there. You have to have this on there, not for thousands of people to come find your music because that's not the way you sell music. You sell, you, you do specific music for art list. You put your music up on libraries. You're not an artist begging people to come to your website. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the viewpoint that I'm, I'm looking for. It's for the one important client, not the masses because you're probably, yeah, you're doing SEO, but nowadays it takes, um, it takes uh, Facebook and, and Instagram marketing to get people to go to places. And I don't feel like that's, you know, why would you want to suck somebody off of Facebook that might want, that might like music to come to your site? What are they going to do once they get there? Are, are, how do you know that they're a person who wants to buy anything at Pond5 or buy anything or download anything at Motion Array? You don't know. And so those are, are your, I wouldn't worry. I also, you know, we'll look at stats and I've stopped w worrying about the stats of my personal composer site. It's there when I run into someone who says, what do you do? And now you, besides your job, you also are a composer. I say, I'm a composer and here's my site. And they go to ericcopelandmusic.com and pff, there's this thing. It's legitimacy. It's proof that I do what I do and I try to keep it updated. So that's my thoughts about that. It's, it's not necessarily about clicks. It's not about SEO and trying to get tons of traffic to your website. This is about that one important person. Um, Arco says, as a library composer, I think we need a portfolio somewhere. Certainly. And, and GR agrees. So uh, Sp Arco says he does have an embed code for Spotify. Again, I just wonder if the embed code works for every person who goes on there because if they are not a Spotify listener or customer, can they access those Spotify things? That's, uh, that's something I'm just wondering about. All right, um, let's see where I am here. I got stuck on that. All right, we're ready to move on to section three here, coming towards the end of what I want to talk about today. But where now, once you have these sites, once you have a SoundCloud portfolio, a disco portfolio, real crafter, band camp, YouTube things, music players, all that kind of stuff. Now, where are you going to put this? And we've already been talking about it. And the first place you're going to put it is a professional website of some kind. Folks, we talked about this last week, but this is for you composers, not artists uh, or producers. If, if Even if it's one page that just has Eric Copeland music at the top, and then it has a, a, a portfolio. That's it. As a matter of fact, that's what the front page of my site looks like. Uh, let, let's just go to my site and let me show you what I'm talking about because um, this is the way I use these. And um, I used to have a website and it had a, a link to everything. But now when you go to my website, all you see is this works. As a composer, I, I think of myself now as a composer slash educator. So the first thing I want people to see is works. Now, I haven't updated this in a while, but it's okay because there's a lot on here. But as you see, when I go through this, this, this file, I'm going to close a few tabs here. As I go through this particular thing, we, it starts out with um, you know, uh, some, some videos, YouTube embeds are very easy to put in there. So I do that and people like to watch music. So on my portfolio, the first thing they see is my works and they start to see classical work. This is something for Stevie B's uh, scoring academy, the scoring challenge that I did. This is a jazz song that I did with my jazz trio. This is a, a, a piano sonata for four hands that I did a video for. This is came off my jazz, my smooth jazz Latin album. This came off my piano album. This came off here off of, uh, this is one of the songs that is part of uh, my exclusive licensing things. This is a, more jazz, this is more trio. This is a song I did for a client that I wrote. 
This is another uh, live video from, this is actually my first live um, classical piece performed live with a, with a quartet of flute, bassoon, vibraphone, and xylophone. And then more piano, more jazz, another client thing, and more and more and more. Now, you see at this point, I've only been putting YouTube links, and there's probably a more elegant way, like a playlist or something I could put on here that would be a little bit more elegant than the way I'm throwing it in here. But then, guess what? Thank you, uh, Mr. Arco. We have a Bandcamp playlist. This is a uh, embed from Bandcamp, and it quickly has all the songs from this album that I, I released a few years ago called Sand Dollar in My Suitcase. It's a uh, Latin jazz type of record. And I have this, um, this player here, and they can listen to any of these songs, and they can also go and buy the album or buy downloads or whatever and share it. So this is a very, very cool embed, and I am so happy that you uh, reminded me of Bandcamp because it's an important one that has a great player on it, and it's pretty well laid out. And the thing I like about Bandcamp that I don't like about things like SoundCloud is that it's specifically used for a thing, for sales and showing off your music in a similar way to disco, which is really only made for showing off your music and maybe doing some, some uh, I don't know, trying to find people that are on, on, on disco. Um, and Real Crafter has probably done that same way, but I really like the Bandcamp ones. Um, more here on my site, you see it just continues to go down. And in my mind, it might be too much maybe for some people but for me it shows the 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 bulk the the quality and the qu quantity though of what i am doing and then i get into some soundcloud players these are soundcloud players i have hooked up for my jazz site for my piano site for my um, positive spin songs exclusive library stuff site um, for from the moment music and just some other things and then even the gospel stuff that I have. So uh, that's all. <laughs> that's all that's on that page. <laughs> You're like, I think that's enough. We're tired of looking at that. But now I do want to show you one other site, and that is um, I want to show you um, this, my From the Moment Music site. This is not that updated, but this is using disco playlist, um, disco playlist embeds. And very clean, um, not much different than the uh, ones that you see from SoundCloud, really. But uh, I love these very clean embeds, and these are all disco things. And I really, really need to update this, um, but I, I haven't that much. As you can see, there's only like two playlists on here right now. So, um, and then I also, can I just share this tab instead. Now I want to show you the uh, Positive Spin Songs tab. And basically this is the website for that. Again, the first thing on this page is these albums basically. And also then I have some YouTubes and I don't think that's it. I think I just have some YouTubes down there of these different songs. But if we look at one of these albums, it literally takes you to um, um, disco and the disco playlist there. And so they can not be distracted, only see the things that they're seeing there on disco and, and see all the songs that I want them to see and hear. And then there's contact information down here at the bottom, which is a little bit more for the sync side where they want to call you or email you about a song they might want to use. So um, yeah, that is the way I use these things. Um, I use them on my website and this is the places where I can send, um, a music supervisor. I can send a library owner. I can send a client. I can send uh, my uncle or a friend or, or whoever that says you do music. What's a good site to listen to it. I don't have to send them to say, well, go find me on Spotify. I can send them directly to my website and then they can start to hear, uh, the music that I have. So um, we're getting to the point where I would love to hear your thoughts about this and answer any questions you might have and even questions that aren't about this. But um, GR says, thank you, sir. Uh, Eric, that's what, exactly what I'm trying to, not to do, beg people. It's undignified. Yeah, 
You don't want to beg for views, but you do need to have a place where they can see it. Arco says they can have a preview, but not listen to the whole track. I think you're talking about Spotify there. Um, Fabio had a question up here that I'll get to while any of you are thinking about any more questions on this topic. We're getting about to the end of the show here. Fabio says, hey, Eric, do you think it is a good strategy to distribute on the streaming platforms the same songs we put on, on stock music libraries? Or should we separate one thing from the other? I feel like I answer this question every podcast. And the answer is absolutely you should, my man. Um, if they're on stock music libraries, they are non-exclusive, usually. And if they're not exclusive, that means you can put them on all the music streaming platforms and on YouTube and, and on Spotify and Apple Music. You can put them everywhere. The non-exclusive side, I did something about the non-exclusive uh, side recently. You can put stuff everywhere. And so um, it's, it's, it, that is the key and the reason why you do non-exclusive music. So you can put it on all the stock music sites and also put it on the streaming platforms. And I'll ask you the same question I always ask everybody when they say, should I put my music on Spotify? Why should you not? Why in the world should you not put your stuff on Spotify and all the, all the places up there? It's basically free. And um, you know you maybe pay one yearly price to DistroKid. I've got a DistroKid link in, down there if you wanna use DistroKid to put your stuff down there. You can find that in the description, but why wouldn't you? Um, that I'm trying to put, uh, I had two more albums go up this week uh, onto Spotify. And let me see if I can find them for you. But I, I am really happy with, uh, and it's important to me to put um, stuff on Spotify. And uh, I had two new records go on there. Um, let's see if I have a quick way to get there. If anybody else has any questions now, is the time uh, to ask them because we are gonna be done somewhat soon. Um, thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, I'm gonna go down here to From the Moment Music. I uh, gotta really find out where these are. I'm just gonna search John Eric Copeland. I know you can't see this yet, but I'll share the screen with you right now. And so here is Spotify and let's see if this is sharing. Um, this is my John Eric Copeland site, and pretty much everything that you see on here, Fabio, is on is somewhere on a um, on on a library. Even all this stuff. Now, this particular album is on a an exclusive library. It just came out this week, which was cool. They mentioned me, and they mentioned Positive Spin songs both, and so when they did that, it automatically put this album. This whole Christmas concert album, which I've gotten lots of plays on this uh, in uh, inside of uh, this past two years. This is where I've made a lot of my BMI money from um, from exclusive and sync licensing is with this album. But you can see all the things. I try to really include um, everything where uh, where I am. So all my singles. Um, there is a spot on here where I can go featuring, yeah, all the things that I appear on. And now I put my name on all of these albums. Halimus is the newest album that's come out. It's a Halloween album that uh, all of these, I think, are in Motion Array and all, all places. So uh, I plan to do more Halloween music, but that is now out. It's kind of a mix of Halloween and Christmas music, but it's mostly for Halloween. And I had a big song used off of this on stock licensing where um, there, I've gotten paid tons of money from um, Identify, from Content ID, from one of the songs on here, this uh, Jingle Scales, this March of the Skeletons song. So that has been very popular and very used on here. Uh, let's see here. Um, Marley Music in the house says, uh, yep, uh, Thanks for recommending Symphonic Distribution. I have a couple of very short albums coming in July. Congrats, man. Great. Jonathan Carlisle says, Spotify, check your contact first. There are libraries that are not allowing tracks on Spotify that are on their library more are following. And another reason why I probably wouldn't use Spotify. I would, I would use more of the ones that I talked about, SoundCloud, Disco, um, and the other ones. Let me stop sharing here real quick. Um, 
Yeah, and maybe not use Spotify. Lucas says, I usually distribute every track on the main digital stores for streaming. Absolutely. Why not? Again, I say, why not, my friends? Use them. Put them up everywhere you can. Arco says, I distribute tracks, which I'm not sure what to do with it. <laughs> well, it, it, you, have, you do have to choose and be careful um, if you're going to put stuff that you might want to send to exclusive libraries. However, that all said, you join Symphonic, you join, uh, I'm not sure about this on Symphonic. I'm not sure about their takedown policy. But on DistroKid or CD Baby, I can have stuff down in two days from all the stores. So if I do get something that I've already put out on Spotify, and, and I'll put it, even if I put it on Pond5 and Spotify and all these non-exclusive places, and I get it signed to a, 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 an exclusive library, that all can come down. It all can come down. The place it can't come down from is identify content ID. That's where you run into the thing. So I just basically, in my head, I say, if I put it on content ID, it's, it's, tied, for, it's tied up for three years. And I'm just going to have to make non-exclusive music with it. Uh, Jonathan Carlos says, I have had three libraries this year telling me I can no longer place future tracks on Spotify. You know, me too. Same. I have had uh, my libraries who used to say, I don't care if it's on Spotify. I don't care if it's on YouTube. Guess what? They care now. Um, as a matter of fact, that album I just showed you on my um, on my site, um, on the Halimus, uh, no, not the Halimus record, but on one of those other ones, that album that just came up, the Christmas one, uh, that that all stuff has already been on Spotify. I'm gonna have to take down the older ones so, so that can be up and only have one in one place. But yeah, same. I have had uh, libraries telling me that. Fabio says, I used to distribute my stuff through SongTrader for free, but now you must pay for an annual fee in order to get your stuff out there. Is this Symphonic safe? Yes, yeah, Symphonic has been around a long time. In fact, it's been closed to in most indies or invite only. So they're a pretty strong outfit. They're over here in Tampa, and uh, I'd like to go visit and talk with them, uh, but I think they're coming up. They just started this, this new thing. So I don't know if I have the Symphonic link down below but you can go to my Symphonic video and find a link uh, to, to work with them. And uh, it would be great. They're, they seem to be really nice folks. Um, Ron Patton is late to the chat. Colonel, General, glad to have you here. Um, Arco says, I can take down everything within a week, so all good. Absolutely. Yeah, even less than a week. So uh, the problem, though, is CID, is content ID, and identify. They sign you to a three-year deal. So if an exclusive library wants it, they're going to want see, they're going to want the content ID as well. So they are not going to want you to put it up on to uh, identify or someplace where you get tied up into a deal. Uh, one exception to that is Song Trader, which I think will take stuff down from Content ID for you. I was with them on I accidentally pressed the Content ID with Song Trader uh, for a bunch of my songs, and then. I had to get them out of there, and they took them out. So Song Trader may be an exception, but I'm not sure. It, it worked for me, but that was a year ago. Who knows what's changed since then? But yes, folks, uh, so just to kind of um, put a bow on this, it's important to show off your music, and not just on Spotify, but uh, um, on your website with a good portfolio. It's important to use places, I mean, if nothing else, for that one visit, when that library comes to check on you, because you you sent music to them, when you, that client comes to see what kind of stuff you do, are you legitimate? Do you make good music? Legitimacy is real. They want to know if you're a legitimate person. That's why you got to have a website in the first place. Um, and to speak to your point, Matthias, your website shows your legitimacy. Not it's not there for you to you know, draw 5,000 people a, a month. What are they going to do once they get there? there? Is there stuff to buy? You, or are you hoping that they're wanting to go to Motion Array? So uh, I wouldn't worry about traffic so much, but it's more about the legitimacy when you need it. Uh, and you can use SoundCloud. You can use Disco. You can use Real Crafter. You can ba Bandcamp, YouTube. You can use all these things that have this embed code that you can use and copy and paste that into your site. And then you can send people to your website and people can find out what kind of music you make 
and then they can they can listen and decide for themselves if you're the person, the composer they want to work with. Well, folks, that's about all I have for today. Please remember to think about joining Make Music Income Daily. You can find that at makemusicincome.com slash daily and see what's going on behind the scenes. I, I talk about libraries and things. I, I talk about things on there, personal things. And I also talk about, you know, client things that I can't really discuss on these uh, larger um, live and podcast things. So if you're interested in that kind of thing and help and support, you can go straight to makemusicincome.com slash daily. Hey, I want to help you make music income. I, I want to help my students make my music income. So there's a bunch of different levels on there. You can find it all right here. Well, that's all I've got. Thanks so much for being part of Make Music Income Podcast, episode 74. I'm going to sign off now. Thanks, everybody. I hope you have a great weekend. And the podcast, the audio podcast, will be up on Monday. I will probably edit it a little bit. And uh, thanks for being here. Jonathan, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Uh, Arco, thanks for being here. Ron, Fabio, um, uh, Luca, uh, Marcus, thanks for being here. Matias, thank you so much for all your information. GR, thanks for being here. Anybody else who I don't see, Bradford, good to have you as always. Anybody else I don't see you, yes, uh, Daydream Studio, Matias, wishing you a great weekend as well. Uh, Arco is already looking forward to the 100th episode. Well, we're heading there. We're heading there. All right, Luca, thank you so much. See you, everybody. Thanks so much for being here, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.